Let's do a, uh, see if they got Risperdal. By the way, Risperdal is a drug they get the boys to deal with anger. It's all over the commercials right now, y'all might have seen it, because it's causing our boys to grow breasts. Mm -hmm. That's right, they growing breasts, because you giving them pills to get miseducated. Mm. Let me try another one. Let's go with a Concerta. Let me see if Concerta's in here. No, you know what we should do? Let's do an antidepressant, because they love to give black boys antidepressant too. Let's do a Zoloft. That's the most popular antidepressant. Let's do Zoloft. Zoloft, depression. Black woman, I want y'all to listen to this too. Because a lot of black women take Zoloft and Prozac to deal with the pain and uneasiness of your menstrual cycle. Remember, in the United States of America, you could prescribe a drug to deal with something it wasn't designed for. Let me say that again. You can be given a drug that wasn't even designed to deal for, with the condition that you were given. So a lot of doctors give black women antidepressants to deal with their menstrual. Y'all need to cut it the hell out because antidepressants in black women have been linked to brain, breast, and cervical cancer. Brain cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, taking antidepressants. So sisters, change your diet. Stop taking those meds. Okay, here we go. Side effects. Where you at? All right. Headache, anxiety. This is for antidepressants. Zoloft, Prozac, Paxil. Headache, anxiety, nervousness, sleeplessness, drowsiness, tiredness, weakness, sexual dysfunction. Sexual dysfunction. Most of the Ritalin medicines also cause sexual dysfunction in boys. So a lot of our sons won't be able to have children when they grow up because you gave them those pills. Night sweats, dizziness, lightheadedness, dry mouth, upset or irritated stomach, appetite loss, electric shock sensation, increased sweating, yawning, abnormal dreams, abnormal dreams, difficulty concentrating, acne, hair loss, dry skin, dizziness or fainting, chest pain, runny nose, bronchitis, heart rhythms, blood pressure changes, bone pain, twitching, breast pain, urinary pain, dang, <laughs> double vision, pink eye, low blood sugar, causes diabetes. So there you go, if y'all think I'm exaggerating. Who wanna get a son some medicine now? And you know what's sad? If your son is already on the medicine, you're gonna have to be very, very careful how you go about discontinuing it. My recommendation is to find a psychiatrist who will work with you to wean your child off. Because if the school finds out that you stop giving that boy that medicine, they're gonna call the social worker and the social worker will come to your house and investigate. And if they find out that you stop giving him the Ritalin or the Adderall or the Prozac or the Cycler or the Metadate or the Concerta, they will take your children from your home. And they won't just take the one child who was given the medicine. They taking all the kids. And guess who they are gonna give your kids to? Not to other black people. Cause black people don't adopt black kids. We too damn selfish to adopt anybody or foster parent. We are the least likely to foster parent or adopt our own kids, trifling as blacks. A black child is more likely to be fostered or adopted by somebody who don't look like them because people who look like them don't give a damn about them. So they're gonna take your black kids and they're gonna give them to a homosexual or lesbian couple. I'm telling you what I know. Because there's so many black kids up for adoption that they don't know what to do with them. And because gay and lesbian couples can't have kids, guess where all the black kids go? To the gay and lesbian families. I know because I do therapy with the children. Our kids are more likely to end up with a sexually confused couple because they're less likely to be adopted by their own people. So you think you've got a sexually confused movement now? You ain't seen nothing. What about all the black kids being raised in gay families? You ain't, got, you ain't seen nothing yet. What when they get eight, nine, and 10 and they start walking around talking about they think they gay? Because they grew up with two fathers and grew up with two mothers. I'm just giving it to you, real.
That's another reason why I want my school to be residential. Cause I'm getting sick and tired of parents, kids coming to school talking about how my mommy gay, my daddy gay, and all this type of stuff. It's crazy. That's what I'm dealing with. So I want the kids to stay at my school. During Reconstruction, the period right after slavery, black folks who was revolutionaries, you know how they dealt with them? They would diagnose them as insane and put them in the insane asylum. That's how they got rid of revolutionary blacks. Once again, using psychology as a weapon against black folks. Schizophrenia. Black folk are more likely to be diagnosed as schizophrenic. Especially if you come from the Caribbean. What is it about Caribbean blacks that has them with the highest schizophrenic rate in the world? Because they deal with spirit. They got that voodoo and they got that ancestor power. And so when they talk, they talk as if the spirits are living. So if you talk as if your grandma who's died is still living because she is, but you take that to a white person in psychology office, they're going to say you're crazy and put you on medicine. And that's why blacks from the Caribbean got the highest schizophrenia rate. They're not schizophrenic. They in tune with their ancestors, which white folk consider to be schizophrenic. Remember, white psychology does not believe in spirit. They only believe in mind. They don't deal with spirit. That's why white psychology can't help black folk, because we are the spirit people. The word Afraka, Africa, means from God's soul. That's what Africa means. And ain't no white man give us the name Africa. I don't care who told you that. They didn't know what the hell they was talking about. It's an indigenous word. See, the problem is we got too many black people who don't want to be black. We want to be Asiatics. We want to be from North America. All this other stuff, because you hate who you are, so you come up with some old fake made up stuff. If you ain't, if we not African, show me through artifact the remains of modern humans, black folk, that's older than the remains of modern humans, black folk, and Africa. We ain't got to argue about this. I don't want to hear your theories, and I don't want to hear your philosophy. Because theory can sound real good. I want proof. Bring me your archaeological evidence that we did not come from Africa. Don't bring me nobody's theory. Bring me proof. I got my proof. You from Asia? Bring me the bones of the oldest Asian. I'm going to bring you the bones of the oldest African. Let's see which is old. You from North America? Bring me the evidence. But I'm tired of all this anti-African propaganda going around. People don't want to be black. You got people talking about they come from another planet and stuff. <laughs> ain't nothing but self-hate by another name. That's why we cling to religion so much, because we don't want to identify with our racial origin. That's why we love religion. More than culture. Nothing wrong with Christianity if that's what you went to. But 33 years of Jesus Christ, how the hell can that be more than 2 million years of African culture? Muhammad ibn Abdullah was prophet for 23 years, but how the hell does that compare with two million years of African culture? You can't give me nothing in the Bible or the Quran or any other book that we didn't already have with us. Come on. I ain't got a problem with your religion, but don't try to force it on me. We got people running around every time we do a lecture. Somebody want to come and make me something I ain't. Brother, come on, you got to get this knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Conscious community. Crazy. Everybody's smart. We well read. We ready to debate. Let's argue it out. But you can't put nobody to work. Mother can't feed her kids. You ain't got no groceries. You ain't got no jobs. No educational system. But you filled up on facts and data with your dumb ass self. <laughs> That's where we at now. Everybody just want to know something. I've mastered this. I ain't done nothing, but I've mastered something. But you ain't got no opportunities for nobody. That's not helping nobody. Mentally gifted. Raise your hand if your child was diagnosed as mentally gifted. Nobody. And I'm not surprised. Why am I not surprised? For two reasons. Number one, if you're waiting for a white racist teacher to tell you your child 
is intellectually superior to her white kids at home, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. It's a conflict of interest. Psychologists are some of the most racist people you can meet. I got colleagues who will tell you to your face, I don't diagnose black kids as mentally gifted. That's right, white supremacy. When I used to go to the psychologist conference, that thing was like a damn Ku Klux Klan meeting. Those white folk would sit around and say anything out their mouth about black children. I said, wow. And yet we trust them to do a fair evaluation of your child. There's no fair evaluation in school. Do you realize the psychological evaluation is a setup? Brothers, you know how you go to court with your public pretender? <laughs> And before you showed up, the public pretender, the prosecutor and the judge already had a meeting about you. They already decided what they're gonna do with you before you came in. The hearing was only the illusion of justice. They didn't already decided what they was gonna do. Well, guess what, black parents? Special ed is the same way. The school psychologist, the principal, and the teacher had a meeting before they asked your parent to sign the paper to let the psychologist evaluate. So you said, I'm getting my son evaluated. They would have let me know if he needs special ed before they even tested that boy. They knew he was going in that class. The paperwork was just the illusion of a fair and impartial evaluation. What am I saying, parents? If you ever want to get your child evaluated, you better pay for it out your pocket and find somebody you can trust who work for themselves. I would never let one of my daughters get tested by psychologists who work for the schools. Never. Never. Because it's a setup. I hope y'all listening. Well, I can't afford it. Fine. But you get what you pay for. Let them people in that school test your child and they're going to come back with all kinds of problems with your child. Because the more problems, the more money. What Biggie say? More money, more problems? That's mental health. More money, more problems. And the crazier I make your child look, the more money I get. Let's go back to adoption for a minute. Foster parents. Because ain't no white folks adopting no black kids. They foster them. Because you get paid when you foster, right? The new slavery is for white folk to foster parent three crazy ass black children. That brings enough money in the house for a nice car, middle class mortgage, vacation. You got a lot of white folks around here, you think they got money, they was born into money because they don't work. Nah, your child is their opportunity. Let me tell you how it works. I'm about to be a foster father, right? Regular kid, no problems, $600 a month. Kid over here, he on Ritalin, ADHD, I might get $800 a month. Kid over here, he on Ritalin, Prozac, Depakote. He done tried to kill himself, punched his dad, cut his mom up. I hit the damn jackpot. <laughs> I'm telling y'all how it works. The crazier the child, the more money you get. And that's why you see a lot of white folk, and they be having the black kids with all the problems. You be like, why do they get the ones with all the problems? Because they get more money. And y'all think these people <coughs> care about our kids. It's about money. We gotta wake up and smell the coffee. The, the other reason why we don't see a lot more black kids being diagnosed as mentally gifted is because they took mental giftedness out of special ed law. They took mental giftedness out of the special ed code. What am I talking about? Ten years ago, if I diagnosed your son as gifted, the school got money like they get for the other diagnoses. They took it out. So now when you diagnose giftedness, the school don't get money no more. And guess what? Since the schools don't get paid for it, a lot of them ain't looking for it. Did y'all hear me? Your son's smart, straight A's and B's, 90th percentile on the test, teacher complaining that he's finishing the work too fast, he complaining that the work is too easy. Why hasn't your child been diagnosed for gifted? Because ain't nobody paying the school to find them. That's why. So if you want your child tested for gifted, you gotta let the principal know. I think my son gifted. I want him evaluated for mentally gifted. This work is too easy. You might have to put him up a grade or two as well. Test my son. If you don't make him do it, they're not going to do it because it ain't no money in it.
And if your child, go, y'all got charter schools out here? In Reno, y'all got charter? Be careful with them. Your child is more likely to be put in special ed if he's at a charter school. He's less likely to be diagnosed as gifted at a charter school. Why? I thought charter schools were supposed to help. Some of them do. But you got to realize something. The only extra money that a charter school gets is special ed money. So if I'm a charter school and I need some money, and I got a bunch of black boys who can't read on grade level, I got to make a decision. I'm either going to get them some tutoring, I got to pay money to help them. See, I got to pay money to help them. But if I put them in special ed, I get money. Y'all see the difference there? So the charter school is more likely to put your child in special ed. And because they don't get paid for gifted, you hardly find a charter school that evaluates for gifted. You will hardly find a charter school in America, I don't care if they're Afrocentric or Eurocentric, that evaluates for gifted because it ain't no money in it. By the way, if you ever get your child tested for gifted, just like I said with mental retardation, mentally giftedness is that extreme, mental retardation is that extreme. If somebody says your child is not gifted and you think they were, somebody says your child is retarded and you don't think they are, I want to see it. Let me put eyes on that report. Let me put eyes on it so I can tell you whether or not they're running the con game. And what is your right as a parent if your child gets evaluated and you don't agree with the evaluation? A school in Reno tested your son and said he was learning disabled. You don't agree. You don't think your son is learning disabled. What is your recourse? Remember, special ed is a federal law. Special ed is a federal law. That means you have a right to get your child re-evaluated. You have a right to get your child re-evaluated and the school district has to pay for it. And the school district, everybody heard me on that. You always have a right to a second opinion. But you gotta let the principal know. Remember, they know the law. But you gotta let them know you know it. I don't agree, the law says, if I don't agree, I have a right to a second eval, and I get to choose the psychologist. You choose your own psychologist to do the re-eval. That's the law. And if your child really needs special ed, and you can prove that they not teaching your son, your son been a special ed since second grade, he in the ninth grade, still can't read, guess what? The law says you can make them pay for your son to go to a private school. That's the law. If a parent can prove that the district is not educating a child with a disability, they have to pay for your child to go to one of them fancy white schools and you don't pay a dime. Door to door service. I know because I help parents do it all the time, but I can only help you if you got your paperwork in order. I can only help you if you got your paperwork in order. By the way, by the way parents, every Tuesday, every Tuesday morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., I host a free black parent teleconference. 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., I host a free black parent teleconference. You can call me and ask any question you want Two hours on Tuesday. You know why I do that? Because y'all want to call me when you feel like it. And when I don't answer, you start talking trash on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't for our kids. I left him a voicemail last week. He ain't called me back yet. He's a fr You ain't the only damn parent in the existence. I don't live to wait for your call. Black people crazy as hell. But on top of that, you ain't even send me a damn check for my fundraiser. Man, get the hell out of my face with that. Black folks is crazy. I left you a message yesterday. When am I going to hear back? You left a message when? Yesterday? Damn. Can I get a chance to get back? Damn, black folk. Yo. I see why people don't be making. See me, I'm down to earth. So I try to keep myself accessible to y'all. But if y'all keep on abusing it, I'm going to be just like the bourgeois Negroes. And you got to go through 20 people to get them to keep playing with me. <laughs> keep on being nasty and smart and post the shit on my pages. And I'm going to just cut myself off from public access. So let me give you my cell number. Put it in your phone if you got a phone on you. Or write it down if you got a pen. I'm going to give you my contact. Phone number is area code 215-989-989. 
215-989-9858. One more time, because I know there's a lot of nines and eights in there. 215-989-9858. That's my personal cell. It's right here. Okay, so you can always text me, Dr. Umar. I need that number for the Tuesday morning call. I'll text it to you. Dr. Umar, I need that website again for the black college tour for the black boys. I'll text it to you. Dr. Umar, you said you're going to be in San Fran. Can I have the flyer, the date, the time, and the location? I'll text it to you. Dr. Umar, me and my queen trying to go to the Africa trip with you in July. Can you let me know where we can go register? So you can always text me. It's never a bother to text me. Now, when you call me, you might not get a call back because I get too many calls to return them. I'm going to just be honest. I don't even clean up my voicemail no more because soon when I clean it out, it fills up in five minutes. And some of y'all will leave the same message 10 times. <laughs> Why would you call back repeatedly and say the same thing? <laughs> Mental illness. <laughs> All right? So y'all have that. Another thing. I need all of you tonight to sign up for the Reno, Nevada chapter of the National Independent Black Parent Association because we have to organize y'all into a strong body so we can bring change in the schools on behalf of our children <coughs> until such time that we have a Fred Douglas and Marcus Garvey Academy here for our children. Okay, we gotta fight for them, y'all. Seven committees, special ed, Homeschooling, Discipline, Finance Committee, Social Committee, Parent Advocacy Committee, Policy Committee. The Special Ed Committee are going to be folks who investigate the Special Ed process in Reno. How many black kids are Special Ed in Reno? And what grade are most of our children in Special Ed? Are they mostly in Special Ed part-time? Are they full-time? Or are they being pulled out? Are they mostly in special ed for ADHD? Or are they mostly in special ed for the learning disability? Or are they mostly in special ed for emotional disturbance? Or are they mostly in special ed for mild mental retardation? We need the information. Because once we have the information, we come up with a plan of action. Yes, we will be meeting with the school board. Yes, we will be meeting with each principal. That's right, a group of you. We want to sit down and have a conversation. We like to know how you're spending your special ed money. Because our children have been in special ed and it don't look like they're learning nothing and it don't look like you're spending no money on them. So where is that extra money that you get? Remember, the special ed children are worth twice as much as the regulars. The special ed children are worth twice as much as the regulars. How much money does, does Reno spend on each child in public school? 7000 Well, special ed kids are 14000 Next committee, school discipline. That means a group of you are going to investigate discipline. How often are black kids suspended? How often are they hold, held back for detention? How often are they sent out of the classroom? How often are they expelled? What are the reasons? Which schools are most likely to suspend? Which teachers? Which grades? Which principals? And then we go to the school board and we reveal to them our findings. And we're going to have a hotline. So whenever a black parent in Nevada got an issue, they call that hotline. I need some help. And we'll be there to help. But we let them know this help ain't free. We helping you, that means you obligated to be a part of this movement. You just don't come and get what you want and disappear because black folks are known for that. Next committee, school finance. Where is Reno Public School spending the money at? Who getting the contracts in the school district? Who got the contract to do the lights? Who got the contract to do the cameras? Who got the contract? to do the lunch, who got the contract to clean the bathroom, who got the contract to do the summer camps. And how many of these people were black folks? I didn't say people of color, I said black folks. If you got the contract to clean the bathrooms, you could probably put 100 people to work in Reno. That's right, that's right. So we gotta track the money, cause too many people are pimping your money, your child's money. School district is the biggest hustle. So we got to get at the table and hear what they planning to do with the schools and let our voice be heard. But we got to be organized. You can't do nothing without organization. No man can do it on himself. Not Garvey, not King, not Malcolm, not me. No man can do it on their own. 
It is the masses that make history. It is the masses that make change, not individuals. What did Kwame Ture say, still Stokely Carmichael? If you organize a little, you get a little bit done. If you organize some, you get some done. If you organize a lot, you get a lot done. But if you don't organize at all, you don't get nothing done. What did Marcus Garvey say? Greatest weapon used against the Negro is disorganization. We'll come to the Umar lecture. We'll go to the debates. We'll read some damn books. We'll watch some DVDs. But when somebody said we got to come together and organize and do some work, your lazy ass stay home. Because we've been raised on church. And in church, you ain't got to do nothing but listen, pray, and pay. We got to change that. If you care about your children, we got to change that. Next committee, school policy. Changing the local operating rules in Reno schools that negatively affect our children. What do I mean by that? You live on the west side of Reno. You want your daughter to go to the east side of Reno. School on the east side is a better school for your daughter. She's straight A's. Ain't no school in her neighborhood. She got to go to the other neighborhood. School district said no. You said why? They said because it's not our policy to let children go to schools outside of their neighborhood. Some of y'all heard this, right? You wanted your child to go to another school. Oh, we can't because that's outside of her zip code. That ain't no state law. Tell them to show you that. Where does it say? Nevada State Department of Ed, state legislature. Where does it say they said my daughter can't go to school outside of the neighborhood? They don't say that. The school district said that. It's not a law. It's a policy. And because it's a policy and it's not a law, we can change it if we come together. Parents are the power. You are what our children need, but you have to get organized. Black folk lose because we are the least organized. Koreans are organized, the Arabs are organized, East Indians are organized, the Jews are organized, the Anglo-Saxons are organized. But what is the black man? Next committee, social committee. This is the social support. We got single mothers out there. They need help, we gonna help them. Single fathers out there, they need help, help them. We got two parent families out there, they struggling, they got a bunch of children and they going through stuff, they need help. We got to help. Social support, you're gonna put on programs and activities and you're gonna help the parents feel better about being parents. A lot of our parents are going through it, y'all. They working two and three jobs, it ain't easy. Some of y'all out there struggling. You love your children, but you're not doing as good a job you can because you need somebody to back you up. And we so isolated and selfish that we don't care about nobody else. So the social committee is going to do what? Tear down the dividing walls that separate black man from black man and black woman from black woman. Why don't we have a support group for all the single black moms? Once a month, why don't we have a black father's tea, where all the black fathers come together, just sit around for about two hours and talk about how hard it is being a black father. How child support might be crushing you. Or how your baby mom got somebody else calling, your child calling somebody else dad. Or whatever the situation is. You just got something on your mind you got to talk about. You're about to get a divorce, but you love your family. You don't want to give up your queen. And you need some brothers who've been through that to help guide you. And ladies need to do the same thing. Okay? You got children by two different men and the men don't get along or the one man treat the other kid like it's his and the other man treat the other kid like he don't even know the other child. We got issues, y'all. And black consciousness by itself ain't gonna solve our problems. We got to come together and we got to work together. That's what the social committee is for. Make black parents feel better about being parents. Sometimes we can be too judgmental. Sometimes we can be too accusatory. It's easy to condemn. It's not as easy to lift them up. And I'm one for the lifting up. Well, if these parents would just take care of their own kids, we won't have no problem. Well, maybe they can't take care of their own kids. Maybe they got personal problems you don't know about. Maybe the mom is HIV. Maybe grandma waiting for a kidney transplant. Maybe daddy dealing with early onset schizophrenia. Let's not condemn, let's embrace. And then the next committee is gonna be homeschooling. For those of you who are homeschooling your children or want to, we got to organize you so y'all do it together as a unit. 
It doesn't make sense for one parent to be taking up the homeschool slack all by themselves. If he's homeschooling, and she's homeschooling, and she's homeschooling, and he's homeschooling, he might be the math teacher Monday. You might do language on Tuesday. You might do science on Wednesday. You might do African language on Thursday. Somebody else do diet and nutrition on Friday. Somebody else African martial arts on Saturday. Dr. Uma, I'm gonna do white supremacy studies on Sunday. <laughs> If we work together, we all chip in a little bit, and nobody's getting burnt out, how are you gonna work a full-time job and be a full-time homeschool parent? Either you're gonna get burned out or your child's education gonna suffer. Which one is it? We gotta be realistic. Last committee is Parent Advocacy Committee. What is Parent Advocacy Committee? Parent Advocacy Committee means I got to come back to Reno, and I got to train some of y'all to be advocates for the other parents. I'm gonna start this sign up list. Name, phone number, email. If you don't live in Reno or Nevada, you sign up anyway. Put your city in your state. If you don't live in Reno, Nevada, because that means we have to start a parent association where you live. You might live in Utah, Oregon. Wherever you at, you put it on there, because we have to organize black parents everywhere. This is not just a Reno thing, it is a black people thing. I am a Pan-Africanist, I do not deal with borders. Parent advocacy. I gotta train some of y'all to be advocates, to be on call. When parents have meetings at the school, you go with them. He gotta go see about his son. She gonna go with him as the advocate. She knows the law, she been trained by Dr. Umar, she's read his book and other materials, and she gonna know exactly what to do, okay? He got to go see about his daughter. She's going as the advocate. You never go to meetings by yourself. Never go to another school meeting by yourself, fathers included. I know you're not scared of the white man, but they will still lie on you and say you tried to threaten that white teacher and she got scared. And the next thing you know, they got the police coming in, taking you out in handcuffs because you're too damn hard-headed. When Dr. Umar said don't go by yourself, that's what I meant. I know over 12 black fathers who can't go to the school no more. You know why? Because the white teacher didn't appreciate him telling her that I'm the father, not you. My son ain't going on drugs or special ed. So you go with the white woman did, she invoked white privilege. He stood up and I felt frightened and I didn't know if he was gonna hit and his eyes swelled. <laughs> you know how they do, play that old innocent white woman role. And I didn't know what else to do so I called the principal, I was really afraid for my life. And you like, all I did was stand up and express myself and now you are forbidden to ever go to the school again. You can't pick up a report card. You can't go to a parent-teacher conference. You can't go to back to school night. You can't even go to the damn graduation because they got a restraining order on your ass against the school. It happens all the time. So black fathers, take somebody with you. And if it was me, I would take a female because the last thing I'm gonna do is bring another brother for a white man. <laughs> oh, I thought they were gonna grab me and, 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 and rape me and I didn't know what they would. <laughs> Even when I'm in a meeting in the school, my white teacher's coming in, I'm the principal. Leave the door open. Damn that, I got my own camera. Damn that, because if they don't like what you're doing, oh, he looked at me and you know, he gave me this real sexual look. You ain't even got no ass. What am I looking at you for? <laughs> Can't cook or nothing. I don't want you to got no shape or nothing I want. You ain't got no jerk sauce or nothing in the bed. <laughs> so brothers and sisters, I need y'all to sign up. If you're interested in helping to be an organizer for the Reno chapter or wherever you live, if you're interested in being a committee chair of one of the seven committees we just talked about, and all of them are named on the, on the sign up list, put that, put organizer, parent advocacy, organizer, homeschool, organizers, discipline, organizer, special ed, organizer, social, organizer, economics, organizer, policy, because I'm gonna need folk I can rely on. Sister Lisa's gonna help, she's gonna need folk she can rely on, okay? Only if you're serious though. If you're a lazy ass black person, don't put organizer. You can still be a member. Everybody gonna sign up. But we need workers for the organizer piece. And we're gonna do some good things to this parent association.
okay? Now, a few more of these, then I'm gonna wrap it up and take a few questions. Propaganda. If we're gonna talk about psychology, we gotta talk about mind control. And Lord knows black folk watch more TV than everybody else. Have you noticed what's going on in the media? What is the media priority right now? The media priority, well, homosexuality, but even along with the homosexuality is assassination of the image of the black family. Mm -hmm. Remember what was going on in Ferguson? All the attention was on killer cops, killer cops, killer cops. United Nations stepped in, told America they need to do something about their white police brutality problem against black male. Killer cops, killer cops. So then the government comes in and they say, we gotta do something about this because the whole world is looking at us for killing all these black men. We gotta get the attention off of us. What can we do to get the attention off of killer cops? I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it on NFL athletes who beat their wives. And in 24 hours, the attention went from Michael Brown to Adrian Peterson. In 24 hours, it went from Michael Brown to Ray Rice. Look at that. They took the attention off police who kill to black men who beat. And don't get me wrong, ain't no brother got no business putting his hand on no woman, okay? But white supremacy don't give a damn about the black man or the black woman. They just needed to get the attention off of them. And they kept on going, didn't they? They started finding black men all over the place beating on their wife. <laughs> Let me get this right. Y'all kill kids. Y'all kill babies. But you more worried about a man who hit his wife who didn't even press charges on him. Y'all see that? White supremacy. White folks will never forget you black. They never forget you black. They gonna hit Oprah. They gonna hit Tyler Perry. They gonna hit them all. Because this is who they are. Last thing they wanna see is a rich black person to begin with. And just because you're turning your, black on your, pe turning your back on your people don't mean we not still upset that you rich to begin with. So they coming at them all, that's what they do. That's why I say don't get mad at the bourgeoisie blacks. Let them think they all this and that. So when we talk about propaganda, we gotta recognize something that most of the misinformation you get comes to you from five companies. AOL, Tom Warner, and Walt Disney. Bertelsmann, Viacom, and Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. Five families control all information. All your music, all your movies, all your DVDs, all your TV shows, all your empires and scandals and all of that come from five groups. The five families, baby. That's why all the news is the same. It's all the same. And the leaders of those five families all sit at the table of the Bilderberger family. The Bilderberg is the council of 300. It's the organization of the white supremacist power structure. The 300 most important white men and women sit around that table and they dictate destiny for the world. And they're gonna do that till black folks stand up and decide to dictate destiny for ourselves. Talk about a free press. Ain't no such thing as a free press. You know what they do to reporters who tell the truth? Your ass end up dead. Anybody saw the movie Kill the Messenger came out last month? About the white reporter from the San Jose Times, who uncovered the fact that the CIA was selling crack in the black community, oh, Gary, Webb. Gary Webb, and they blew his damn brains out. Ain't no damn free press. If they ever catch you telling the truth about something white folks doing, you are out of here. I work on a newspaper too, the Umar Johnson newspaper, and we gonna put out, I'ma have an exposed white supremacy page. Any type of racism that you go through, you want to send it to me, I'm going to put it right in that paper. You went into the supermarket and they followed your ass around the whole time you were shopping, they getting exposed. That's right, we want to expose all their ass. Chinese throwing all that. Expose all them dirty ass chicken wings. Expose them. <laughs> you know damn well there ain't no chicken you eat. What chicken you say look like this? That's a damn man thing that you're talking about. That's a chicken. Have you ever noticed license and inspection never go to the Chinese store? Have you ever seen the city inspect a Chinese store for health? Has anybody? Nope. But let you open up a black restaurant in Reno. They be out there every day talking about you ain't got enough smoke alarms, you need an extra back door, your stove too small, you ain't got enough roach traps, 
<laughs> they be all up in there. But they don't bother the Chinese though. Five hundred billion dollars is what they spent on mind control. Can anybody tell me why the United States government spends a half a trillion dollars on media? You know why they spend a half a trillion dollars on media? Because white folk are a minority in the world. And the best way you can control the majority being a minority is you got to control the way they think. And that's the purpose of media. You stop people from going to war. Anybody ever heard of the Rockefeller Board of Education? Did y'all know the Rockefellers had their own Board of Education? Oh, yes. Why would a family that's into global investment in oil start a school board when they ain't got no damn schools? Because the Rockefellers said, if we want to control the world, we got to control the textbooks that the schools use. We have to make sure we know what they teach in the children, or otherwise they might teach the children to take our power. Why do you think your children don't get classes on economics, <laughs> classes on real estate, classes on multinational investment? It's set up like that, that you don't get taught big business in school. That's how they set it up. You get taught how to work for white folks. And that's why the schools are closing down now, because they don't need black workers no more. Don't you got schools closing down around here? Oh yeah, they're shutting public schools down, baby. Ain't gonna be no public education in the next 50 years because they don't need no black workers in the next 50 years. They got the Mexicans here to do that. You're done. If you don't create an economy for yourself, you will die. You can pray all you want, march all you want, vote all you want. America no longer needs the black man's labor. America no longer needs the black woman's labor. That's why you can go to college and still not get no job because they don't need you. This is the reality. Public schools were started to teach you how to read, how to write, and how to count so you can go work for Chevy, go work for Walmart, go work for McDonald's, go work for the factory, but they didn't send all those factories, the second and third world nations, and the ones that's still here to give them to the Mexicans and Latinos, you ain't got no damn job. So what is the purpose of public school now? The purpose of public school now is to prepare black girls for poverty and black boys for jail. The new racism is to act like there is no racism. Intelligence testing. William Stern, a German Jew who was ultimately kicked out by Adolf Hitler, but he worked with Adolf Hitler for a while. And it was him who gave Adolf Hitler the science of intelligence testing that he made up to justify the extermination of European Jews. I don't know if y'all know this, but when they did the research on the Nazi uh, exterminations, the Holocaust, most of the Jews they killed had an IQ test and they folded. They used the IQ test to justify extermination, just like the United States used the IQ test to justify sterilization of black folks. Half the states in this country did not let you have children or get married if your IQ score was below a certain point. America didn't copy Hitler. Hitler copied America. The whole Nazi science program was born right here. And Hitler was financed from Wall Street by European Jews. Why is that interesting? Because the first thing white folk want to tell black folk, black people sold you into slavery. Don't get mad at us, because it was your own people who sold you. Oh, really? Why I ain't heard nobody tell the white Jew man yet that it was your own people who financed your Holocaust, so stop complaining about it. Black people need to get over slavery. Why y'all keep talking about slavery? Oh, really? Ain't nobody told the Jews that. They come out with a Holocaust movie every month. <laughs> Look at the double standard. I didn't participate in your Holocaust, European Jew, but you damn sure participated in mine. You was the primary financier of most of the slave ships. You was the primary financier of most of the insurance companies that insured my body on arrival. But I helped you, European Jew. In World War II, it was a group of black soldiers known as the Liberators who went into the heart of Berlin and freed the European Jews from the worst concentration camps. I helped y'all. 
you hurt us. Don't ask me to cry no damn tears for you because you own the media companies that's putting out negative images of black men. You own the record companies that's putting out negative images of black folk. You own the magazines and the newspapers. Don't you dare say, I gotta cry a tear for you. I ain't got no tears for nobody but black folk. And I don't hate nobody else either. But my love is for mines. My love is for mines. I'm unapologetically African and I'm gonna die that. I'm gonna die that. And you better die that too. The time has come for us to stop feeling insecure about being proud of who we are. The Latino loves being Latino and don't speak for nobody but the Latino. The Chinese love being Chinese and they don't speak for nobody but the Chinese. The Arab loves being Arabian and he don't speak for nobody but the Arab. And it's time for the black man to love being the black man and don't speak for nobody but ourselves. What Marcus Garvey say? The most prominent prophet and king of Pan-Africanism, provisional president of Africa, the only black man to organize more than a million people, 15 million to be exact, the man who laid down the plan for every organization to come after me. I don't care what group you belong to, they copied Garvey, every last one. Garvey said, if the black man is not careful, if the black man is not careful, he will drink in all the poison of Western civilization and die from the effects of it. Ain't that us? We drinking like hell, ain't we? We drinking integration. We drinking homosexuality. We drinking the media up. We drinking Xbox, video games, biracial marriages, and all this foolishness. The poison for getting who the hell you are and why you here. As I wrap up, I can't say enough about this one. Miseducation. America has a rite of passage for black boys. We miseducate from pre-K to third. We special educate from third to six. We psychiatrically medicate from six to ninth. We juvenile incarcerate from ninth to tenth. We psychologically frustrate in high school and then we prematurely exterminate them. One out of every four black males murdered by their 35th birthday. And I only got $250,000 for school. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to convince black folk that white supremacy no longer exists. We don't understand white supremacy, and we the greatest victims of it. How you been under the white man for 500 years and you still don't understand white supremacy? Some of y'all think white supremacy means white people got to hate you. Some of y'all think white supremacy means that white folks are ignorant of how great we were back in Egypt. Some of y'all think white supremacy mean that the white man didn't accept Jesus or Muhammad yet. White supremacy ain't got nothing to do with emotions. The best white supremacists love being around black folks. They come to your meetings, live in your neighborhood, smile in your face, because white supremacy ain't got nothing to do with emotion. White supremacy only got to deal with one thing, power. Do we control the resources of Reno? They could like you personally. Your white girlfriend at work, she likes you. But guess what? Her sister needs a job. And it just so happens her sister do what you do. She gonna set your ass up to get written up and fired to give her sister the job. It wasn't personal, baby. It was business. You better stop thinking every white man that frowns is an enemy and everyone that smiles is a friend. As far as I'm concerned, the one who tell you that he don't like you as a friend because he let you know what he about. I'm working on a book right now, Introduction to White Supremacy for Black Children. Because y'all not teaching our kids about racism. Black boys are learning about racism on their own by the way they're being treated because the mommy and dad, oh, I don't want to teach him about that because he might hate white folks. But it's okay for white folks to hate him, though. We ain't got to teach your son to hate. I'm not going to teach him to hate. That's an emotion. We ain't got time for emotions. I want our kids to deal with white folks the way they deal with us. It's just business. 
Well, you gave a black man a job before you gave me a job. I know, you okay with me, white boy, but he belongs to my race. He come first. It ain't personal. We can still listen to Eminem. It's just business. <laughs> See, I got to mature your political understanding. That's why y'all be, well, that white person was so nice to me. It wasn't about that. Black man, she might sleep with you every night. But guess what? Her daddy don't want to see you around. It ain't personal. It's just business. I got to understand white supremacy is just business. Y'all keep getting it all twisted. What well, they really like me. Listen, if I sell sneakers and he sells sneakers, I might like him as a person. But I'm not going to tell him my strategy. I'm not going to tell him where I get my sneaks from. I'm not going to tell him when I put my sneaks on, store, on, on, on sale. He cool. I like him as a person. But this is business. Stop making white racism emotional. Old white men chewing uh, 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 that tobacco, spitting out the car, nigga at you. That ain't racism no more. That's emotional. That ain't nothing. They the dumb white folk. Smart white folk don't never let black folks know they don't like them. So I'm going to teach our kids about white supremacy to understand that. White people in control. That's all they want. You're talking about something. Well, if we teach them how great we was in Africa, they will like us. Shh. Do you realize? Listen. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. To the extent they know who you are, the more racist they become. Because in studying you, they see your potential. You want to teach them you built the pyramids? They're going to be more racist. You want to teach them you gave to the world 85% of the inventions that white folks use? More racist. You mean to tell me you invented the gas mask before I let you go to school with my kids? You was performing successful open heart surgery before we integrated the schools? You invented the cotton gin while you were still on the damn plantation with no schooling and you invented the damn cotton gin? Huh? Potential. They scared of black potential. That's why they keep on kicking us when we down. Black people say, why they keep picking with us, man? They've been on us for 400 years. Why don't they leave us alone? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. If you play sports and you playing the national champions and you beating the national champions by 50 points and there's only five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter of the basketball game, do you let up? Oh. Hell no. And why don't you let up even though you are 50? Because you know their potential. Couple three pointers and turn this whole shit around. We got to take them to the whistle blow. And that's white folks with black folks. They know your potential. If you give these black people an inch, if you give them room to breathe, even though we've been on them for 400 years, I'm telling you, these people invented the cell phone, they invented the internet, they invented the helicopter, they invented the self lubricating engine, they invented the refrigerated truck, they invented most of the medicines that keep people from going blind. They give us the first successful open heart surgery. You don't let them up. You beat them until they're gone. Otherwise, they will take this planet back. That's why racism is so aggressive. Because they know if they give you an ounce of breathing room, you'll snatch it back. Because you're supposed to be in control anyway. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, somebody peeking in. Come on in. In conclusion, I'm going to leave you with a quote from my ancestor, Frederick Douglass, who said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess the favor of freedom and deprecate agitation are like men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want the rain, but can't stand the thunder or the lightning. They want the ocean, but can't deal with the awful roar of its waters. He said this struggle we have might be moral or it might be physical. <clears throat> or it might be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. He said, for 20 years, I prayed on my knees to God for freedom, but the good Lord gave Frederick no freedom until I got up off my knees, up off my knees, up off my knees, and started praying with my feet. He said, if you want respect from white folk, stop looking for pity. The people who pity you will never respect you, and the people who respect you will have no need for pity. He said, this oppression that we face must be ended. 
with blood or with blows or with both. But the limits of tyrants are prescribed by the people they oppress. We determine how poorly we get treated, not them. He said, if a man is on his face, don't help him up, you leave him down. Because if he's not man enough to get up on his own, the minute you lift him up and let him go, he falls back down anyway. So you didn't help him, you hurt him. Leave him down until he's man enough to get up on his own. And then he becomes a real man because he's self-made. The first of my family brought to America was a black man named Bell, stolen from West Africa. He was brought to Talbot County, Maryland in 1701. He married a black woman by the name of Selah. They had a daughter by the name of Jenny. In 1774, Grandma Jenny gave birth to Grandma Betsy. Grandma Betsy was an enslaved African, but she married a free black man, Grandpa Isaac. They had about 12 children. One daughter was named Harriet. Aunt Harriet was raped by Aaron Anthony, the Irishman who owned my family. As a result of that rape, she gave birth to the greatest black man to walk on American soil. His name was Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. At the age of 20, Uncle Fred escaped from slavery to freedom. He dropped the family name Bailey and picked up Douglas to evade capture under the fugitive slave law. The next year, Harriet's little sister, young Betsy, my great, 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 great grandma was born. She was snatched from her son, Stephen Henry Bailey, when he was still a baby, so deep into Mississippi. Grandpa Stephen wasn't so lucky as his brother Frederick to run away from slavery. He remained a slave and fought in the Civil War with his son, George Washington Bell, my great-great-great-grandfather, the first black public school teacher in Talbot County, Maryland. They fought in the United States Colored Troops of Maryland, infantry. <coughs> Uncle Fred didn't fight in the Civil War, but he sent two of his sons, Lewis and Charles. They fought in the Massachusetts 54th Colored Regiment, from which we get the movie Glory. Morgan Freeman plays the oldest son of Frederick Douglass but he doesn't play him by name. But there's a lot of lies in that movie. Glory would have you think that all the black men who fought in the 54th Regiment were escaped slaves. Wrong. Every black man in the 54th Regiment was a free black man who voluntarily gave his life for the freedom of his brothers in the South. When the Civil War was over, Grandpa George married Grandma Manny. Grandma Manny was the niece of Bishop Alexander Wayman, the seventh bishop under Richard Island in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. He's an ancestor of mine as well. They had a daughter named Caroline. Caroline moved to Philadelphia from Maryland when her parents died. She had a daughter named Vivian. Vivian married a Spanish-speaking Cuban immigrant named Cicero. They had a daughter named Ida. Ida married James Johnson. They had a son named Jamal. Jamal married Barbara. And on August the 21st, 1974, the anniversary of the Nat Turner insurrection, the Haitian Revolution, the George Jackson assassination, the Fred Douglas Fugitive Slave Convention, Umar Johnson was born in North Philadelphia. I say all that to say that we got to teach our children their history, their family history. You giving them Marcus Garvey, but you ain't gave him grandma yet. You giving them Malcolm X, but you ain't gave him grandpa yet. Knowledge yourself begins with your own family tree. We run around bigging up all the collective ancestors, but what about the ones in the family? What about the ones in the family? Teach those children who they are. You need to start doing research on your own family tree. Because the name that is remembered is a spirit that will never abandon the family. We believe in our culture that as long as we call on the names of our deceased relatives, they will always and forever be obligated to help us in the physical realm until we get back to the heaven. Remember, all of us are an ancestor reincarnated. In African culture, everybody here been here before. Reincarnation is not East Indian, it is African. It comes from us. Meditation is not East Indian, it is African. It comes from us. And speaking of meditation, we need to do a little bit more of that. Because we get bombarded with so much propaganda, negative information, you gotta detox your brain. Meditation is the detox. To get quiet, stop thinking, and listen. And let the universe, let the universe reconfigure your mind.